people talk about duck hunting culture in a lot of different places of the country and in the world, but I would challenge any place to, to match the culture of duck hunting in Arkansas. Situated along the Mississippi Flyway, the natural state is a bed and breakfast of sorts for wintering waterfowl, offering the perfect combination of food and habitat, as ideal as it may be. I would say over the last five or six years, uh, what I've seen more than anything else is that the number of birds that are available to shoot in Viamita has dramatically decreased. Meet Matt Mosler, a former TV meteorologist turned pastor and an avid duck hunter. He runs Crosshairs Retreat Center in Arkansas County, a duck lodge used for ministry. Mosler's sentiment shared by many in duck blinds around the state, but the Arkansas Game and Fish Commission sees it differently. Luke Naylor, a waterfowl biologist at AGFC, acknowledges, sure, recent seasons have been tough, but he's quick to point out that duck harvest estimates have been steady since the 1980s. The good news is, is that Arkansas continues to lead the nation in duck harvest. It's in the top five in duck, seasonal duck harvest per hunter. Still, for duck hunters like Mosler, the math doesn't add up. And I think it was Mark Twain who said there are lies, there are damn lies, and there are statistics. I have no other evidence other than anecdotal evidence, and that is that when I go out to duck hunt, whether it's in Biomeda, whether it's in one of the rice fields around the Grand Prairie, we don't have the numbers we used to. While sentiment for years past is low, now on the dawn of a new season, anticipation is high among hunters. And according to Dr. Steve Adair, this year's season hinges largely on just that, a series of highs and lows. Pressure, that is. Look north of you and, and look for um, snow cover. You know, when you get snowstorm and below freezing temperatures where that water can start to to freeze, then that's going to force birds to move. But to make Arkansas a desired destination? You need water here. Uh, a lot of Arkansas duck populations we've shown through some research, duck populations in Arkansas are really driven by extensive surface water flooding in the Delta. Well, hunters will of course keep their eyes to the sky in anticipation of cold fronts and Arctic air that promote that southern migration. Perhaps the truest indicator of the season to come isn't here in Arkansas at all. Rather, it's what's going on several thousands of miles away. It's the weather and the climate in the Canadian prairie pothole region of the upper Midwest. The entire prairie pothole region in the U.S. and Canada is, is dry. And what that means for waterfowl is that um, they will have a much reduced breeding effort. So we'll find that um, the birds are older. They're um, you know, more experienced, they may not decoy as well. Discouraging signs of the season to come. Given current conditions, I wouldn't say the outlook is great for this season, actually. Uh, we have very poor production uh, from the breeding grounds this year, it looks like. That won't stop hunters from practicing the same patience they know all too well. Wading through frigid waters and enduring the disappointment of lackluster hunts, all in hopes that the future is as bright as winter sunrises in the Delta so often are. But the science suggests even more patience will be needed over the coming years. Uh, the Canadian side still looks really dry and probably a pretty low chance of a frost seal there. So that means that likely next spring is gonna stack up for another pretty dry year. It takes some pretty significant precipitation events to recharge that soil and begin to hold water again. Mosler, Naylor, and Adair all three experts who approach the same issue with their own experience and expertise. And they agree that some of what we're seeing is a result of long-term impacts we're seeing on the weather. The temperature staying so warm up in the, the northern plains that they don't have any need to come down to Arkansas. And when they do come down, finally duck season's over. Long-term changes in the climate, I mean, that's gonna have an impact. Our winter temperatures are getting warmer and um, there's a pretty strong uh, record for that. And if we don't take care of what we've been given, not only do we lose out on a great deal of income, not only do we rob ourselves of a great deal of heritage, but we rob ourselves of an identity that few other states would be lucky enough to have. Arkansas, for now, remains the duck capital of the world. 
any time where we've got lots and lots of rain, um, especially in the summer when it's hot and humid, um, that's going to be the, the ideal conditions for mosquitoes to have lots of habitat to develop in. Heat and humidity, it's nothing we're unfamiliar with in Arkansas, but a couple of key things are changing. Temperatures are, are higher earlier in the year. Um, definitely an increase in mosquito conditions. But this is Arkansas. After all, mosquitoes are a sign of summer as much as sunburns and ice cream trucks. So why the concern? Well, Dr. Emily McDermott, she's a bug scientist at the University of Arkansas, and she's been tracking these changing conditions and what they mean for us. There's evidence that populations are you know, higher earlier and later in the year as well. To better understand the why behind these longer mosquito seasons, we've got to consider what makes for good mosquito conditions. According to the National Institutes for Health, that's any time the temperatures are between 50 and 95 degrees and when the relative humidity is 42% or more. Now, because of our planet's changing climate, we're seeing more and more and more of those days right here in the natural state. In fact, take a look at this almanac data. All the way from 1970 to today, we find a modest but steady rise in not only the temperatures, but the humidity as well. And because of that, Little Rock now seeing an additional 11 days a year of these ideal mosquito conditions. In Pine Bluff, 16 more days, 17 more in Fayetteville. Now that's the past compared to the present, but as for the future? You know, as we start to see longer summer type periods, those mosquitoes are gonna be active for longer during the year. They're gonna be able to bite more. They're gonna be able to lay more eggs. Um, and that's gonna increase their populations as well. And our changing climate doesn't just mean more heat and humidity, but it also includes those extreme weather events like the flooding we've seen recently. That too plays a role in all of this. We always see big emergences of mosquitoes associated with kind of these extreme storm events. They're creating large amounts of habitat for uh, mosquitoes to develop in, and they do tend to happen in warmer parts of the year. You want to uh, ensure that you don't have um, standing bodies of water um, around your house because mosquitoes can breed in, in varying uh, amounts of water, including even as small as a bottle cap. Laura Rothfeld is the state veterinarian with the Arkansas Department of Health, and that's where they keep a close eye on mosquito-borne illnesses across the state. And with an increase in mosquito population comes an increase in concern. We do have West Nile virus and we do have um, people that, that will uh, get sick with it. We have identified Eastern equine encephalitis or triple E in horses in recent years, um, even in uh, centralized in Pulaski County within um, areas of, of high populations. It's a concern that's also shared by bug experts. We've seen an increase in the number of uh, mosquito-borne illnesses in the United States over the last 10 years or so, and there's no reason to think that that trend is suddenly going to go down. And it's that trend that has experts believing the increase in mosquitoes is more than just a nuisance, rather a canary in a coal mine. Climate change is happening and, and whether or not we are contributing to it is the debate, but it's certainly happening and, and certainly ticks and mosquitoes will follow along with that. Surrounded by relics of earlier generations, weathered and rusted by mother nature herself, the work happening at this small farm in Jackson County is gaining national attention for its approach to a changing climate. Quite literally, the future of agriculture as we know it may very well be rooted right here in Arkansas. Come on in. This year, we had a very wet spring, which is actually the fourth consecutive year of an abnormally wet planting season for us. When it finally stopped raining in May, it really stopped raining. I mean, it didn't rain for about 40 days after that. Hallie Schaffner, a sixth generation farmer, describes this constant shift from one extreme to the next as the perfect storm, one that's increasingly difficult for her farm to withstand. Climate change is no longer a hypothetical situation. Arkansas farmers and ranchers are bearing the brunt of this. It's a divisive topic for some, but for Hallie, the realities of climate change in the natural state are having a very real impact on her family's way of life. So on top of being thrown off course because of all of this rain and flooding, we're now contending with being thrown off course with extreme heat and no rain at all. The challenge is not addressing any single weather event. It's addressing these 
paper cuts that just sort of keep adding on. It's like a wound that never quite heals. For each day the weather prevents Schaffner from being in her fields, that leads to higher cost to run her farm and ultimately smaller harvest. Two key factors that are driving up the price that we pay at the grocery store. Forget the politics. Let's talk about you and me, food that comes on the table, money that goes into your pocket. Thinking about what kind of foods do you love? Do you go to the grocery store and you buy? How accessible and affordable do you want those to be? These are the questions that led Schaffner to rethink how she works the very soil that her ancestors have for generations. In doing so, she's pioneered and reimagined farming in a more resilient and sustainable way. That means changing the way we farm. In many cases, it means treating our soil fertility differently so that we can use fewer fertilizers and less chemical. Converting to electric wells and installing solar, for example, to reduce our energy costs, become more energy independent. It also means planting seeds of change, quite literally. Take Arkansas's top two exports, rice and soybeans, for example. Schaffner's Farm is working with some of the largest ag companies to grow and test new varieties of these crops, designed specifically to withstand the same harsh weather extremes that have become the norm. These genetics help farmers get more for less, even in difficult conditions. The goal is better harvest, more money for farmers. The upside is we're combating climate change at the same time. Schaffner's multi-pronged approach to sustainability has not only earned her the recognition of her peers here in Arkansas, but it's landed her small farm on a big national stage in publications like Garden and Gun magazine. While her leadership itself is fruitful, her goal is so much more. It becomes very personal for me, for farmers. It's not something that we can ignore. We do not have the luxury of ignoring climate change. I would say I'm hopeful because I think the ag industry recognizes that it's time for action on climate change. And I would say that now is the time more than any other. In Jackson County, Scott Covert, THV 11 News.